That is a four iron apparently. So I'm gonna play a few holes with these Cleveland XL Halo launcher irons. I guess we call them irons, hybrid irons. Now, what I love about these clubs is there's new ones come out nearly every, say, two years, and I've done reviews on the other ones before. I actually own a set of these. Um, they really do rile up some interesting discussions with the audience. What do you think? Just before the review starts, would you or wouldn't you? What do you think? Let me know down there in this comment section. So 136 yards middle. So the first thing with the four iron there is it actually has roll and bulge, this one. This one has a curved face on it. Uh, meaning if you hit it out of the toe, it's gonna to start a bit right to try and help it when it curves back to the left, not miss target and vice versa on the heel. Like a wood. And you got the obvious size and shape of this four iron, which is just, you know, massive stand out. It's not a iron at all. The four is a hybrid and a big chunky hybrid at that. You know, it it's, couldn't be further away than an iron. Now, I've got 136 yards in. I've now got a wedge. This looks like a game improvement wedge. I mean, it's got a bit of sole. The top edge is kind of like more normal. You don't see the back of the club out of there, even though there is obviously a bit of back on it. So this for all intents and purposes now has transitioned down into a total line and looks like a game improvement wedge. And feels just like an iron. Like the sound is decent, but not too crazy tingy. The four iron was definitely more like a hollow bodied, tingy, tingy kind of hybrid club. That's a part. So let's start off with the transition. Before we look at the tech, I've got a four iron, a six iron and a nine iron here. So you're really seeing a serious transition in the nine iron sole over to the six iron, which is obviously very different to what most six irons would use, than to the four iron where it is just a full blooded wood. We've got these rails on the back of some of them and not other ones. They're a little bit out of the back there, but we start going into a bit more of a standard sole in the nine iron. Now, when I look at the nine iron again, it just looks like a chunky iron, but if we get to the six, yes, you see a lot of the back of the club at the back of that and obviously the four that we hit you see absolutely loads so you can see the six iron here obviously you see loads of the carved out they sweep it away with this sole a little bit but i mean you see it where with the nine you don't you see the top edge more so you definitely need to start redefining or thinking about what you want your irons to look like sound like and maybe perform like which we'll show you the performance as we go um why don't we as i play this next part five of these clubs why don't we go and have a look at the tech Let's see what Cleveland are actually saying about these clubs. So we've got the XL head design. What they're saying is a bigger head means more MOI in the seven iron, our most ever in the Cleveland high bore irons. It's maximum distance, maximum fun. So they're, they're really going for it on the MOI. We get the rail to V-shaped sole in these, glide rail in the long irons, gradually transitions to V-shaped sole in the shorter irons, ultimately the three-tiered sole of the jewel and the sand wedge. So you're getting some help through the sole design as it transitions. Mainframe, designed by artificial intelligence, mainframe variable face technology. So trying to keep that ball speed consistent across the face. You get action mass as well. So an eight gram weight placed inside the end of the grip delivers better balance and more control without extra effort is what Cleveland is saying. The high ball crown setup, one step crown drops the center of gravity for higher launching shots. Loft specific grooves, four iron to seven iron lofts have wider, flatter grooves. Eight iron to sand wedge lofts have closely shaped, deeper and higher spinning wedge grooves. And that's something I do notice with these irons through the years testing is that they the spins do stay relatively decent considering what they you know the look at the club and you also get what they call an accessory build so you get two you get a, if precision is your top priority this custom configuration is half an inch shorter without counterbalancing for max control um, so you, you get a basically a longer one which i'm testing and you can also get a half inch short one as well if it's more that you don't want to just smash it you want to get real dialed in control in there
So we're redefining the ideas of help, really, aren't we, with these, in the term iron. And again, it's a loosely used term. And I think that's where some of the kind of big discussions with these clubs get a little bit heated sometimes. Because I post pictures of them and some people say, oh, if you have to use those, you shouldn't play golf. And I just think, you sound fun. Because they obviously challenge the idea of what an iron should look like so much. Where even when you make an iron look this extreme, you still really are dealing in a few degrees of launch for some golfers. Because when it comes to talking about MOI, trying to find that in individual shots is going to be near on impossible. But when it comes to looking at something different, yeah. I mean, the ins it inspires confidence. I've used the six iron in, in this in my set and, you know, I could easily go back to it. It's just really nice. For someone like me, I like my hybrids. I mean, that's something you should question yourself. Are you a long iron player or a hybrid player? I'm a hybrid player, meaning a six iron that's like a hybrid to me. It feels like cheating. And it's that launch. Like it's so easy to pop it up in the air. And the thing that you'll notice on a golf course, if you actually look at your game a bit, golf courses steal launch away constantly. They give it back hardly ever uphill slope. Sometimes you don't want it back then after that because you can't control direction. At a rough, ball sat down a little bit more. It's constantly trying to rip launch away. So a club that gives launch back, wow. My experience of coaching over years, it's only a good thing for more golfers than actually care to admit it. 113 yards out, so I'm gonna hit a little wedge. And these are the questions I would be asking myself with this set of clubs. Can I play all the shots I normally play? So the idea is like, you know, how far does each iron go? Does it fit into what I want it to do? Can I play them out of the rough? Can I play them from semi-rough, good lies, bad lies, all those kind of things. As well as playing like little ones, this is too much club for this distance. Can I play a little knockdown one? And if you think about that, if you are able to play the normal array of shots that you have in your bag from a regular set of irons, yet this gives you a few more weapons with launch out of situations where launch is taken away from you, So that's a little wedge and that's doing nicely. Oh yes, that's a great shot. <laughs> uh, hello. So all of a sudden you've got all your normal shots but you've got a higher launch in one as well. You might have more weapons than you think. And here's a great little test you can run when you're doing your iron fittings and you're testing clubs. It's 99.9% .9 of students that I test trying to get them to hit the ball higher. So if they can, can you hit a higher one? They find that the hardest. Trying to hit the ball lower, taking loft off. They don't find that easy. That's not what the term I'm using, but it's easier than hitting it higher. So golfers have no problem taking loft off and hitting it a bit lower as a generalized rule. When you ask them to try and get over a tree quick and make distance, I mean, think about it. Let's say you've got a club that goes 190 yards, but it won't get over a tree, so you've got to go to one that goes 180 to get over it, but now it doesn't reach. But you could take a different club out of your bag that now does launch, there's a weapon. But remember, subject to loss, you deliver those kind of ideas. Not everyone gets extra launch with these. It's not just a given. They can help deliver a bit more launch. You've still got to deliver the numbers for that, because what some people do is see these clubs, they feel like they're going to go into orbit, and then they start delivering them differently, because believe it or not, people react. Not a bad start for a little wedge for me. Like, how do I do that? Because I never do that when I'm playing. I should just pretend I'm testing clubs all the time. It's stupid. So you can see from these two holes, we're gonna play one more and we're gonna go inside and show you some numbers. I think the numbers are interesting with these clubs is if you redefine how something looks so dramatically, so we could say that's definitely redesigning the ideas of what people were meant to see in a set of irons, then surely we need to redefine performance. And this is where this trips up a little bit because we'll show you the numbers inside. We're gonna go and do a test inside just to show you what you can get from these. Is the numbers aren't redefined as much as you would think. I think the thing that's really redefined the most is your ideas of game improvement, your ideas of how friendly something can be, which hopefully would only have decent ramifications for your game for the actual outcome cool this is 
224 into the wind, four iron. Don't think I'm getting there. Let's give it a whack though. When it comes to whacking an iron, like I feel like I can totally whack that. And that's kind of the point, isn't it? It's redefining what I think I can do, which might then challenge me to do a bit more. And it then might challenge me to do a bit more in certain situations because uh, you do have a few extra degrees or a bit more of a degree of launch and a peak height from different situations, those kind of ideas. I just understand that it might just challenge people's ideas a bit too much. I get that. No, couldn't get there in this wind. Here's another great little cheat, I think, with these irons. If you're someone who chips with more regular irons or someone who maybe struggles with their chipping a little bit, what you've got with these is you've got a really friendly sole. Like that was a nine iron run and you've got this amount of sole to play with. I mean, it's, it's like gonna glide. You are not gonna dig that. And then like, look at your seven iron runs. Look at it, do you see what I mean? It, it, it's like a chipper. It does, I mean, it's like a cheat. It feels like an absolute cheat. So there are wins in other departments with a sole this thick. All right, just finishing off some numbers. Let's hit a few nine irons and we'll show you the spread with these hybrid irons. So four iron carrying on average 203, seven iron 173, nine iron 143, um, nine iron spinning at 8.5, seven iron spinning at nearly 6,000, and the four iron spinning at nearly 4,000. That's what's always been so interesting with these clubs from the first time I ever tested them and I was surprised and impressed with them years and years ago is that the spin isn't stupidly low considering what you're looking at, you're expecting like the lowest spinning bomb balls out there and they're not. They're, they're like, that's indoor off the mat numbers. You can add 500 to 800 revs on the grass out there. So you're looking at seven iron spinning at nearly 7,000 revs, which is like a player's club in some ideas. And because of that, you don't get ridiculously long irons. You get irons that are kind of in my, Pretty, I mean, they're shorter, I would say, than my ZX irons that I'm using at the minute. Launching at 14, 19, and 23. And this is the thing I do feel like if I need that launch to always be on the slightly higher side, then I, I feel like that option is there. And I think that's where the real gains will come from. It's gonna come from a little bit of extra launch in certain situations. And it's also gonna come from that inspired confidence that might allow you to get out there and just smash it a bit more in situation. Let's just simulate a few games to finish to show you where I think you, know, you could benefit from these, certainly as you go into the longer clubs. So we're 219 yards out at Pebble Beach. This pin is tucked kind of front right. So this is now where this kind of four iron over a different four iron for me, and there'll be equivalents for your abilities and distances that you hit it further or shorter. I feel like I want as much help in the launch and land, land and stop department as possible. Let's see if I can get one on this green. So there you go, is that gonna carry? You can see this is right at the top end. Oh, not quite enough distance. So you can see from what I was carrying, I've put it at 219 to really push myself because I wanna know when this club is going to the top of my kind of performance set, if you like. So not just a safe little 200 yards one down there. I'm trying to get one 220 yards to a real tuck pin. You know, does the extra MOI, does the extra help come in and kind of save the day? When I start hitting it harder, my strike will vary more. So this is where I will use the roll and bulge on this forehand. This is where I will use the MOI claims. I might not be able to see them, but I'm hoping they come through. Oh, that one won't reach, just out the bottom. You can see it's going lower and it's now coming up. You see how it just flew that bit shorter, which I think is the main thing here. It doesn't matter how much help they put on there. If my strike goes outside the realms of where I need it to be, nothing will save me. Which is kind of what I was hinting out outside for something to look so different. I think people are gonna want it to just be performing so massively outlier different. That won't be the case. I think it's, you're gonna to have to wanna to buy into the looks 
of what the kind of confidence it inspires or not, rather than it just be purely that they're, you know, they're going to be measured as the most friendly club you've ever tested. Because I'll be honest with you, that's an impossible measurement. Believe me, I've tested it loads. All right, come on. Decent strike. This is right on the money. Put some speed in. That might get there. It's a bit toey, but it's friendlier on that side. Just fly. There we go. Get up. Oh, yes, please. So if I was ever in this situation, this is, you see what I mean? I just want. Why would I turn this help away? And I think for lots of golfers, it's just something that you need to try. It's something you need to test. And I think the real standout comment for me is, oh, I'll just start left and that's good, isn't it? I might need to move five yards closer. If you're a hybrid player, you know, someone who enjoys hitting hybrids, blending that through, why, why struggle with hybrids? Just hybrid them all up. But, you know, if it's your ego that's holding you back, then that'll be a shame. For me as a hybrid player, like I've got a set of the older ones of these and, you know, I might get a newer set of these as well. So unfortunately I've not been playing enough because obviously the pandemic stopped us all. Um, I was going to do a year where I, you know, used both sets just, you know, keep switching to show you how similar they are. And maybe I should do that again a bit more. Post in the comments if you want me to, you know, experiment and you want to watch me play a bit more with them because people often ask what handicap could you be to use these? Well, yes, they're going to be aimed at recreational golfers more, but uh, I, think, I think more people could test these than they actually do. Let's say that. There we go, started on at the left, oh, I didn't cut it. Much better strike, that one's easily getting there, look. So I mean, I'm just not good enough for this shot, which again is why I would absolutely be wanting as much help out there as possible. And I used to blend these into my set. That's the standard one, look, short right. Impossible up and down. <laughs> pa, lovely. Post comments down below, would you or wouldn't you I definitely kind of get some emotions going in these clubs, which I understand. For me, when it comes to these, I absolutely can and could. They make sense. I like the way the sole interacts with the ground or what I feel like it's going to do. I like the cheats on the short game as well for lots of golfers. Um, I understand why lots of people would be put off with them. I think the biggest thing that people don't do is they don't test these. I think if you did test these, it might redefine a little bit what your ideas of iron should be. And certainly challenge your idea of what your longest iron should be, which is something I've challenged in myself for years now. Stopping basically the seven iron and my six iron generally goes as helpful as possible within reason. Um, yeah, post comments down below. What do you think? Would you test them? Wouldn't you? Absolutely hideous and you couldn't game them. Or you don't care about that, you just want performance. Let me know down there as always. And thanks for watching.